There we go. That's how you do it. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to show you people how to configure your Fallout 4 VR for optimal presentation to fix the three main issues, blurriness, player height, and resolution. Super sampling and all that good stuff. Okay, so I just want to make sure that this stuff is coming through because Oculus Home and with the Rift Core 2.0 situation, see this is my house, I'm trying to teach you from my house here. Uh, sometimes these windows don't show up and they're like invisible. So I have to show them one at, one at a time here. So, if you own Fallout 4 VR, okay? If you own Fallout 4 VR, then you have this file path in your computer and you have that file by default, okay? It's under C drive, my documents, right? Womp. C drive, my documents, and then you go, my games, Fallout 4 VR. And then there's the file. You got your three files here. Fallout 4 VR Custom is what you want. They're all INI files. And you just double click on that bad boy. It's going to open up that file inside your notepad. Okay? So Fallout 4 VR Custom. Alright? That's what you're looking for. And that's where it's found. It's on your computer if you have installed the game in a default location. If not, search your computer for this file. <laughs> that one. Right? Fallout 4 VR Custom. Right? And then, once you open that bad boy up, it's going to look just like this. Do -do 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 testing, testing. Have you got it? No, it's still invisible. Okay. It's going to look just like a this, man. I don't even know what this is going to look like. Now it's visible. Okay. So this is that Fallout 4 VR custom file. Okay. What we just did was we added these lines right here. If you look at my Twitch feed, you'll see at the bottom I included these these uh. These commands, these words, the important ones. Uh, I'll also put it into the description of this video, okay? These lines right here is what you want to add. The VR display category, the general category, and this last one is already here. You're just adding the FVR scale equals and then the number that you want. This is for your player height. So this is your player height down here. FVR scale equals whatever number. I chose 75. It feels good for me. It's about how tall I am. I don't know what the conversion scale is, but uh, that's it. You can go higher. I guess the uh, power armor is, is by default 85 or whatever. Now, uh, right here, this middle one, this fixes the blurriness. This right here. Still visible? Good. General, right? You, you're adding this whole category right here. So you just copy and paste this whole thing just like this. So S starting console command equals TAA off. That will fix the blurriness. Before I had to go into the console, right, the console by pressing the tilde button inside the game and then enter that command TAA off and that would uh, remove the temporal anti-aliasing which would uh, get rid of this constant, consistent, uh, persistent blurriness that's on everything, re removing the view distance and making everything quite terrible. The top one up here is a super sampling, right? This top one under VR display, okay? And you're changing this, or you're adding this thing right here that says F render target size multiplier equals, and then your chosen super sample. Right. I've experimented around so far, 1.4x, right? That's right there, or 1.4 is working quite well for me. It's not uh, snagging up. I may do some experimentation in the future to raise it up bit by bit just to see how it feels. You could put two there, you know, you could, you could put four there if your graphics card can handle it, who knows. But yeah, so I added these three things here that will fix the resolution, whoop, and then the blurriness and the player height, okay? Just copy and paste a thing, and then you save this file. You close it, you save it, you're good to go. Next time that you open up Fallout 4 VR, it'll work, okay? So you have Fallout 4 closed, you open this file, you change the stuff, you save this file, you open up. Fallout 4 VR again, and then it works. All this stuff is done, okay? So, we will go ahead and do that right now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and initiate the matrix. The matrix will be initiated right now. Right now, the matrix will be coming online right now. Now I'm going into Steam VR from Oculus Home. It loads up, right? Like another program overriding the home functions, but Rift Core 2.0 is still here. Once this thing comes up, from every time I, I launch Steam VR, 
I have to adjust the input emulation for Fallout 4 VR to make the thumbsticks act more like a touchpad, you see. It's a, it's a big deal. It's a, it's a big old nasty issue. I'll tell you what. Big old, big old nasty. There you go. Sure, we're taking a sweet time. Live, home, man. Slowpoke, magok. You are so slow. I guess it just wants to open up Steam VR Home. But still, okay, here we are in the home of the other one. This is Steam VR Homeland. You know, yeah, it's the same thing as Oculus Home, but you get to have customizable environments here. But as I was saying, I have to go inside here and adjust the VR input emulator emulation. You install this, right, by installing this VR input emulator, which was created by somebody in the community. If you search my previous video history, you'll find a video where I talk about how to find this file. But yes, you just type it in there and type in input emulator, and once you install the file, then comes the configuration part that you have to do every single time because it doesn't save the configuration. So once you install the file, it creates this extra button. So you have Steam VR closed. You install the file wherever it may be with the powers of Google that you could find on your own. I'll put it in the, in the description. <laughs> but once you install that, next time you open up Steam VR, you have this extra button here. You go Steam Desktop Live VR Input Emulator, right? And then a settings, okay? So this new button's here. So every time that I launch it, I have to do these settings every time. So simulation. I launched into Steam VR, and now it's time to do some Fallout 4 VR. But first, I must change my emulation of the action of my thumbstick to act more like the, the thumb pads of the Vive. So I go ahead and press the button and write Cha, little system button, go down to the VR input emulator, and now up here, I change the device to the left and right. I'm trying to affect the left and right controls here. That's what I want to do. I want to change the 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 uh, stick function. So I start with the left. Right here in the middle, I go to input remapping. Mm -hmm. Now I'm only changing two things in this page here. Okay? I'm changing axis, the axis zero, the joystick, under analog. And I'm changing the button A function on both controls. The button A on the left control will be the X button. As you can see, same button. All right, so... I'm changing the button A under digital input, and I'm changing axis zero under analog input on both controls. So, starting from scratch, I go up here to device, I select left control, I go to input remapping, I go down to axis zero joystick under analog inputs, I change this right here. I'm only changing touchpad emulation from disabled to position based. I'm also hitting this right here for the button press dead zone fix. These two things will make your stick function a whole lot better uh, in the menus, but not while you're moving around. While you're moving around, it's very janky and bad. So you want to be able to turn it on or off. So this is the on function acting just like a stick. Sorry, just like a touchpad. Wink. All right. So you save. All right. So that's done down here. You can't tell it's done because it still says no remapping because you never changed this function up here, the binding type. You only changed touchpad emulation right here, position based. Yeah. So you save it. Now that part's done. For button A under digital, for under A under digital inputs, right? Button A, you want to change this one too. Ta da! You have options there. You have normal press, long press, or double press. What this does is this is the toggle. See, toggle touch by emulation. When you. When you double tap button A, so let's say on my right controller, if I double tap button A, it'll turn on or off the touchpad emulation on my right controller. So if I double tap button A, it will change from nothing to toggle touchpad emulation. That's what I want. You hit save. You make sure it says double tap, double press. Now I'm doing double press because single press seems to initiate by itself sometimes or I accidentally press the button. And then I'm running fine, and then all of a sudden I'll start drifting around. So you want to make sure that you're able to uh, deliberately turn this thing on or off. So double press seems to work very fine for me. 
So it's all saved. So what we just did was the button A, turn it to double tap to toggle the touchpad emulation, right? And here's the touchpad emulation, axis zero, joystick, right here, touchpad emulation, position based, the button's pressed, it's all good to go. So that was the left control. Now I'll go ahead and do the right control at real time speed. Right, input emulation, axis zero joystick, change from no remapping to position based and make sure that the button press dead zone fix is selected, save, go to button A up here, enter digital inputs, select double press, change from no remapping to toggle touchpad emulation, save it, save it, verify one more time, we're good to go, position, button press dead, dead zone fix, saved, and we're done, and we're done. Nothing else to do, we go to Steam, we launch our game, and we begin, and that's how you do it. So we just went over how to fix the resolution, how to fix the blurriness, how to fix the player height, and how to fix the controller. After that, it's all on you to make yourself special and survive the apocalypse, baby. So we begin now.